to it. Obviously, we're going to get to Alabama, Clemson in just a bit, but we have to start in Boston where UConn absolutely humiliated Illinois in the title game of the East region. Final score, UConn 77, Illinois 52. Believe it or not, the score was tied 23-23 with 84 seconds left in the first half. And then UConn did something you don't see every day. And that something was go on a 30 to nothing run over a span of eight minutes, eight seconds of game time. 30 to zero. The score went from 23-23 with 84 seconds left in the first half to 53-23 with 13-16 left in the game. Absolutely incredible. So Dan Hurley's Huskies are in the final four for the second straight year. Strong jaw on a scale of one to WTF. How would you rate UConn's performance against Illinois? Capital WTF. That yeah. was incredible. Uh, UConn looked amazing, and it's kind of what we've come to expect from UConn. Um, they started the game on a 9 0 run uh, the, in the first half, started the second half on a 25 to nothing run, uh, part of a 30 to nothing run. Uh, it, Norlander was obviously there in Boston, and in his story, he wrote, um, from the 123 mark in the first half to the 1317 mark in the second half, it went from 23-23, was a tied basketball game, to 53-23. And that can happen sometimes in, in big games, can happen in an NCAA tournament game. That very rarely happens in an Elite Eight game. It very rarely happens to a team of Illinois' caliber. And this UConn team, man, they're just on another level right now. Um, <clears throat> I thought it was funny after the game, uh, Brad Underwood, obviously the Illinois coach said just a few days ago, basically, you know, how do you prepare for UConn? It's like, just paraphrasing here, but basically like, you know, there's nothing that UConn's going to throw of us at us that we really haven't seen. Um, and then after the game, it was like, well, I didn't really expect that. <laughs> uh, so I thought it was pretty, uh, pretty self-aware moment from Brad Underwood, who's, uh, whose team just got run out of the building. This is a fantastic UConn team. Did not think they had this in them. Um, yeah, what a, what a game from the Huskies. I mean, I thought Illinois would be competitive with them. Like, I even said this in studio tonight. I was like, I'm not going to say it on air because I don't need my mentions getting all messed up later on tonight when UConn wins by 30. But I won't be surprised if Terrence Shannon figures out a way to keep Illinois in this basketball game. Yeah. And he just didn't. And by the way, he was terrible. He's been on an incredible NCAA tournament run. In fact, an incredible run going all the way back to the beginning of the Big Ten tournament. Terrence Shannon had been averaging above 30 points per game. And then against uh, UConn, it's, it's, you know, he took 12 shots, missed 10 of them, mm -hmm. finished with eight points, three assists, two rebounds. He had more fouls than he had made shots. And the 30 to nothing run, I, I'm sure you saw this. Uh, Norlander tweeted it. Uh, others did as well. It was clearly circulating in the arena. Um, the last time UConn had a 30 to nothing run in a game of any kind was 1990. And it was against New Hampshire. Like think about all the games and all the stuff UConn has won since 1990. And they had never done anything like what they did tonight to the Big Ten tournament. Like, what are we doing? I mean, they, they did this to a, a, a team that has been absolutely rocking and rolling. They did this to a team that's got the best offense in the country outside of UConn's offense. Think about that for a second. UConn's got the best offense in the country now. Illinois entered the game second. And the second best offensive team in the country shot 25.4% from the field against UConn and was 6 of 23 from three, 26.1%. So we, so here's what Illinois was up against tonight. They're playing the best offensive team in the country, and they couldn't do anything with them on offense. Like, they couldn't score on them. You're playing the best offensive team in the country, and you can't score on them. What? I mean, it's just – there's a reason why UConn is now a heavy favorite to win the national championship. Yeah. Like, that, the last number I saw was minus 210. Like, that's massive. Purdue is second at plus 390. They've won. Uh, they've led every game in the Cincinnati tournament by at least 30 points. In every game so far, they've been up by at least 30 at some point. So they are just as overwhelming as everybody tells you, just as awesome mm -hmm. as everybody tells you. And I know this has sort of been the like little toss up question everybody's having fun with on TV and podcast over the past week or two. Like, is this team actually better than last season's team? <laughs> 
Last season's team, at the end of it, when they got through destroying everybody, finished third and seventh in adjusted offensive efficiency and adjusted defensive efficiency. Number three in offense, number seven in defense. Right now, they're number one in offense and number four in defense. I mean, what are we talking about? I, I'm not I'm not crowning them yet, but I understand yeah, right. why, I understand why other people are. I mean, I get it. I, I'm gonna continue to pick Purdue just because I'm I'm 60% boilermaker and I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna go down kicking and screaming. But like if every time I say I still think Purdue's gonna win the national championship, if you go, <laughs> God, that's an idiot, what is he watching? I totally understand. Although I should point out Purdue is beating everybody's brains in two in this NCAA tournament, but they that's got right. one more game to go before uh you know they can get to the final four yeah just a couple quick nuggets for you from this from this UConn game UConn had more assist 21 in this game than Illinois had made baskets that was 17 um, UConn scored as many points in the paint 52 as Al- Illinois scored in this game 52 points uh Shannon Terrence Shannon finished two of 12 shooting uh for eight points had just two points in the first half it was pretty much over after that um did you catch Dan Hurley after after the game talking about some drawing some motivation from Sean Harrington? I did not see that. No. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. So Dan Dan Hurley infamously gets uh, motivation from pretty much anywhere, whether it matters or not. And um, Sean Harrington, former Illinois player, played there for four years. He averaged a whopping five point seven points per game in four <laughs> seasons. Uh, Sean Harrington earlier this week tweeted, you know, that UConn had not played. Uh, this physical of a team never seen someone like Terrence Shannon and uh, <laughs> Hurley, you know, basically said like my coaches gave it to me as kind of fuel for the fire coming into this game. And uh, he called the statements uh, quote asinine. So uh, <laughs> perfectly on brand for, for Dan Hurley, who again, just like, you know, he can, he can, he can draw it, motivation from anything. Oh, it's so good. It's, it's Michael Jordan like in the sense that you're just finding disrespect in any little place you can find it even if it doesn't matter where it's coming from. Like, why does anybody in the world, I I say this respectfully, all right? And I I recognize that every time you you say, what I'm about to say, I say respectfully, you're about to say something disrespectful. I get it, I understand. But I do say this as respectfully as I can say it. Why would anybody care what Sean Harrington says about anything, right? Like the whole world is out there screaming, Dan Hurley's amazing and UConn is amazing. And the only thing he hears is that, (laughs) right? Yeah. It's 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 like it's like if um you write a column and a hundred people like just were you know on scale, but like a hundred people say that's the best column I've ever read. And then one person says that's an embarrassment. I don't know how you published that. You should delete it right now. And the only thing you're caught up on is this one person who doesn't matter, broadly speaking, having a counter opinion to what everybody else in the world has. And that's what you're caught up on. That's what Dan does. And like it, it it's how you can make yourself crazy. But it's also what makes him brilliant. It's also yeah. what makes him great. It is what makes him uh, – by the way, we're going to get to this point too. If they finish this thing off, it's been settled for a few years now. Like everybody's just like, who's the best coach in college basketball? Oh, Bill Self. I'll go Bill Self, and then you start the conversation after that. Like Dan Hurley's coming for that. Like yeah. if, if we do the candid coaches thing this summer and UConn's coming off back-to-back titles, I won't be surprised if we ask that question, Dan Hurley's the – the leading vote getter. Yeah. I mean, he, he's got to be, I actually uh, chatted up with Kyle Porter here in Dallas this evening. He asked me who, who you would start a program with. If you could pick any coach in college basketball, and I kind of, you know, um, thought about it. I actually mentioned briefly Bill Self, but I mean, Dan Hurley has to be number one, right? Um, I, I, I think so at this point, yeah. because you just look at what he's doing in these past couple of years with not entirely different teams, but largely with different teams. And this isn't the byproduct. Like if, if, if Duke ends up in the final four, it's pretty obvious how that happened. And you don't want to take away anything from that staff and the development and the teaching and the coaching. But if Duke makes the final four, you know why? Because they recruited like a final four caliber roster. And then it became a final four team. That's not what UConn's done. I mean, Tristan Newton, Cam Spencer, like, I, like these are these are just guys that he has brought together, and and calling them just guys might be discounting them a little too much. They're obviously incredible basketball players, but like UConn, UConn does have five star players, but the the it's not 
it's not built the way a Kentucky team is built or a Duke team is built or even the, you know, the, the way uh, uh, most blue blood programs are built. It's just, it, what is the common denominator between the greatness from last year and the greatness of this season? It's the guy running the whole thing. And, right. and yeah, I mean, I, I, I think Kyle Porter is probably right. If you had to pick a guy right now to start a program, it, it's probably the guy running the one in, in, in at UConn right now. Yeah. And I would add uh, just as a, a loose end from this game that I thought was funny uh, during an end game interview, Brad Underwood um, was, was kind of asked like about Donovan Klingon because he was dominant defensively and Underwood, you know, with an interview uh, with, I think, I think it was Andy Katz on TBS said, you know, if, if Klingon blocks a hundred, he blocks a hundred. Um, Illinois finished eight of 30 on Lance in this game. Donovan Klingon finished with five blocks. I, I can't countless other altered shots. Uh, just the all time. That's a bold strategy. Cotton. We'll see if it pays off. And it just absolutely blew up in Illinois face. I thought it was hilarious. Well, what did you think the mindset was? Because like everybody <laughs> with a Twitter account was saying, why yeah. do they keep attacking Klingon? Now, Brad Underwood's not, a dumb basketball coach. So no. is, is, is like, I, 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 there's some thought that it was like, we've got to get him out of the game. And the yes. only way to get him out of the game is attack him and hope that he fouls us. And that just didn't work. But that seemed to be on some level, the strategy. I think that had to have been the strategy, which is UConn looks devastating and unbeatable. Whenever Donovan Klingon is in the lineup defensively, his impact is amazing. Offensively, he's super efficient. He's a great rebounder, does everything on both ends for this Huskies team. Uh, but when he gets into foul trouble, this UConn team looks like very, very, very good, but maybe not elite. So maybe they just thought, hey, we'll just go at Donovan Klingon 50 times and see if we can get him into foul trouble and, and stick him on the bench, and he plays 10 minutes each half. That would be a win. Uh, that was not the case. Klingon was awesome. This, I think, was his best game of the NCAA tournament. Um, defensively, he was all over the place. and. He was the best player on the floor in this game. It, not to get ahead of ourselves, obviously, but if we get to, you know, a week from Monday and we are watching a UConn-Purdue national championship game, I, I'm not predicting anything. I'm just saying if 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 the key to – forget beating Utah, UConn, but playing with UConn. If the key to playing with UConn um, is to get Donovan Klingon in foul trouble and get him off the court, like that's the first mm -hmm. step. You just got to get him off the court. Well, then – Maybe Purdue's got the one guy who could do it. Yeah. You know, like, you know, that that's at least something that makes that interesting. UConn looks as close to unbeatable as we can remember a college basketball team looking recently. I guess you'd probably have to go back to like 2015 Kentucky before mm -hmm. they got caught. It looked like they might not get caught. Um, and obviously Connecticut has lost this season three times, but all in true road environments, which they're not dealing with anymore. In fact, so far in this NCAA tournament, they've had something close to home environments. So Correct. they look as close to unbeatable as anything we've seen recently. But one variable that could theoretically cause issues in a championship game against Purdue is that, um, you know, Purdue's got if, – if Donovan Klingon's the, the, the second best center in America, and he might be, I don't know, I'll let other people debate that, well, then the guy on the other side would be the best. Right. And and that would be obviously be a fascinating matchup. But again, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's circle back to this one. Klingon, just to put some numbers on it, 13 shots, made nine of them, 22 points, 10 rebounds, five blocks, three steals. My Memphis Grizzlies need a center, and my Memphis mm. Grizzlies are going to have a top 10 pick. There you go. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Well, like, let me ask you this, and now we're getting a little off track, but there were, the counter argument to – somebody like the Grizzlies using a top 10 pick on Klingon would be, um, yeah, but you're with John Morant, Desmond Bain, Jaron Jackson Jr. You're trying to compete in the Western Conference playoffs. Can you do that with a rookie center? So that would mm -hmm. be the question. Like if you're trying to push next season, can you do it with a rookie center? I don't know, but he looks, it, he looks great. And he was clearly the difference maker and most important player um, in UConn's blowout of Illinois in the elite eights.